Hi everyone, it's June 24, 2021. A 12 story building partially collapsed. It just collapsed. No severe weather, it just collapsed in Miami or near Miami Beach. <laughs> A huge pile of debris down one side of that building, at least one person, has been pulled from that rubble with dozens of emergency crews there now launching a frantic search for other survivors. The building shook. And then I looked out the window and you couldn't see. I thought it was like a storm or something coming in. And then uh, uh, what happened was that when the dust cleared, there was the back half of the building or back two thirds of the building was gone. It's down to the ground. Working on the roof of a condominium would not cause this. I do know something that could cause it, though. Electromagnetic frequencies. But here's another report. The search and rescue is still ongoing. It affected 55, 55 units. Half the building. Half the building. My God. This is an ABC News special report. Hey, good morning, everyone. TJ Holmes here at the ABC studios in Times Square in New York coming on the air because we're keeping an eye on a breaking situation that happened overnight, a 12-story building collapse. You're seeing the picture there. This is in Surfside, Florida. This happened overnight. We're waiting for a press conference. It looks like they are getting together uh, and getting together to give us information, the very latest. But what we do know is that this building collapsed, partial building collapsed, a 12-story residential building, at least one person has been confirmed dead. The rescue effort has been underway overnight, but the pictures as the daylight has come has shown this devastation. Again, this is in Surfside, just north of Miami Beach in Florida. Several, these are family units. We are told that some families walked out on their own. However, the mayor there has told us there was no reason to believe that this building was not full when this building collapsed overnight. 911 calls started coming in around 1 a.m. in the morning one in the morning so we are standing by for these folks to give right, us folks, the update they, the city they officials setting up, looks like they are the getting started we're, gonna we're getting an idea of what the format this, right? is going uh, to be so uh, we're going to go ahead and listen in we'll wait just a moment there sounds like they're doing a little housekeeping here but this it's been a horrific situation uh, so far to keep an eye on but let's get the update now and listen uh, to the officials there about this about this building class. Diaz, Board of County Commission Chairman. From there, we're going to go with Mr. Andrew Hyatt, who's Surfside City Manager. We're going to do English, followed immediately by Spanish of each speaker, and at the end, we will do questions and answers. We're going to do questions and answers to the very end because we have inclement weather that's coming, so bear with us as, as, as much as we can. Okay? And once we call the last the last question, it'll be the last question. Yes, sir. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll start off, we'll start off with the Honorable Levine Cup. Thank you, thank you. Well, here we are, the unimaginable, incredible, uh, our prayers are with, with the, the residents, with the families, with the community. What we know at this point is that the Champlain Tower, uh, Tower South, is a 12-story building. It's uh, more than 130 units, and about half of those have collapsed. A massive search and rescue is underway, uh, and we know that we're going to do everything we can possibly do to identify and rescue those who have been trapped in the rubble. Uh, Miami-Dade Fire Rescue is leading the efforts, and they have been on the scene since the early morning, and they're doing an amazing job. 
thank you so much to our brave, brave fire rescue uh, workers. Uh, they had years of experience in this type of operation. Uh, okay, you can, I'll link below to this. This is a 20 minute press conference. Um, and I don't know if you noticed the bunk beds. Okay. Phew. Well, we also had a bridge collapse in Washington, D.C. this week. The image is coming in after a bridge collapsed onto a Washington, D.C. highway. The awful scene today, the bridge flattened, several cars destroyed, several people rushed to the hospital, in fact. Authorities believe it all happened when a truck slammed into the bridge. ABC's Rachel Scott tonight from the scene. Tonight, authorities are investigating this terrifying scene a pedestrian bridge collapsing onto one of the busiest highways in the nation's capital. Officials believe this truck slammed into the bridge, sending it crashing down. Drivers trapped in their cars, buried under the debris along I-295. We had a collision uh, with the bridge right here, which separated the bridge from its mooring. Um, the result of that uh, collision caused multiple cars to be involved. At least five people were rushed to the hospital. Tonight, all expected to survive. You can see some of the mangled concrete and twisted steel that has collapsed right on top of that truck. All this shutting down six lanes of traffic. Deborah Tracy works in a residential home across the street. She was just steps away from the scene when she heard the crash. I heard like a crunching, scraping sound, like nails on a chalkboard, then a boom. I'm just thanking God no one was killed. Crews now racing to clear the wreckage and inspecting nearby bridges along the highway to make sure they weren't damaged by the truck. And Rachel, everyone has survived this, and you've learned more tonight about a recent inspection of that bridge? Yeah, David, the mayor saying tonight that this bridge was inspected earlier this year and that everything checked out. This stretch of the highway is expected to be closed until tomorrow. Crews will be working through the night to clear out the debris and the rubble. David everything checked out? Really? Well, let's check that out integrity of the bridge. Evan Lambert was the first to report this, and Evan, this has been a major development in this story as we try to figure out what happened. Jim, definitely a big development, and city officials still maintaining that the truck running into the bridge is what brought it down, but we are learning much more about past problems with this same bridge. Fox 5 found this press release issued by the D.C. Department of Transportation on May 27th. It says the pedestrian bridge over Kenilworth Avenue at Lane Place Northeast would undergo, quote, preservation and repair activities from May 27th through June 18th. That's just five days before Wednesday's massive collapse that sent four people to the hospital, crushed vehicles below, and snarled traffic in D.C. and beyond. When asked earlier today, the mayor had this to say. Any idea when this bridge was last inspected or if there are any structural concerns about it before this? No, we don't have any structural concerns about the bridge and it was last inspected in February. But since Fox 5 uncovered mention of the previous repairs and asked why they were needed, the mayor's office said the bridge's condition was, quote, misstated. Now we know a February 2021 inspection revealed the bridge to be on a scale of four out of nine or, quote, poor condition. There may also be issues with the company that owns the truck, officials say, may have hit the bridge. According to U.S. Department of Transportation records, the truck's DOT number, which is required of certain commercial vehicles, is inactive. An employee who answered the phone at Frank's Scrap Metal in Silver Spring would not give a statement, but did tell Fox 5 the driver is okay. Aren't these bridges supposed to be uh, constructed to withstand a truck hitting it? I would think so, but you know, more and more, I pretty much every day now, I am reminded of that New World Order insider in 1969 giving a talk about what was to come in the United States over, over um, the uh, next decades from 1969 and one of those things no more security nothing is permanent streets would be rerouted and renamed which has happened 
areas you had not seen in a while would become unfamiliar. Among other things, this would contribute to older people feeling that it was time to move on. They feel they couldn't keep up with the changes in areas that were once familiar. Buildings would be allowed to stand empty and deteriorate, and streets would be allowed to deteriorate in certain localities. The purpose of this was to provide the jungle, the depressed atmosphere for the unfit. We've got an awful lot of places just like this. And he also said that buildings and bridges would be made so they would collapse after a while. There would be more accidents involving airplanes, railroads, automobiles. All of this was to contribute to the feeling of insecurity that nothing was safe. <laughs> 